We're back, Chuck. Yes, we are. I don't let this alone. You know, there's too much stuff out there that people, I think, that need some explaining. That's, that's you got some explaining to do, Neil. I got some explaining to do. I got. Yes. Thank you, Ricky Ricardo. Yes. Well, uh, no, that was actually my mother-in-law. Okay. That's, <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, so I thought it was time to talk about flying cars. Okay. Well, now that we're on the subject, since you brought it up, okay, uh, you and your kind, all of you people, okay, uh, what the hell? Where is my flying car? <laughs> what do you mean, my people? Who, yeah, you people. <laughs> you know you people. The scientist engineer you science, types. You science people. So I, that's true. That is true. No one will come up to the comedian and say, where's my flying car? That's exactly. Nobody's coming up to me and complaining. <laughs> Can you believe it, man? All these years I said we were going to have a flying car. And what did you do, Chuck? You didn't do a damn thing. No. Okay? It's you guys who were supposed to have us. In flying cars. All right, by here now. you go. I have a, an unorthodox account of this. Are you ready? Go ahead. Okay. So first, uh, I, we already have flying cars. They're called helicopters. Okay. Um, but we, you don't think of it as a flying car, but it kind of is. It lifts up, goes through the air, drops down. It, they're really noisy. Notice. All they right? are indeed. And if the engine fails and the rotors fail on a helicopter. It becomes a brick. Whereas if your engine fails on your car, you just roll over to the side of the road. So there are dangers. There is noise. There is, well, where are you going to land it? How are you going to park it? So there are practical issues related to it. But that's not why I called this session with you. Okay. okay? I want to say we already have flying cars in ways you haven't thought about. And here it is. Ready? Uh oh. This sounds to me like how my father told me why we didn't go to Disneyland because we already been to Disneyland because Great Adventure is just as good as Disneyland. Okay. And I'm like, well, we, we didn't even go to Great Adventure. And he's like, well, guess what? Hershey Park is Great Adventure, and Great Adventure is Disneyland. As far uh, as Hershey I'm Park has rides and fill it outside. Right. Of they all got right. rides. You've been. You've been to one. You've been to them all. All right, I, I, then I should stop now. <laughs> I want to sound like your father. <laughs> All right, here All it right, goes. Go ahead, go All ahead. Right, let's unpack why you want flying cars in the first place, okay? All right. Yes. So I'm going to tell you. All right, imagine a road that's only two lanes, one in one direction, one in the other. So here you are, you're driving, and a car stalls in front of you. Right. That backs up every single car behind you. Absolutely. That's not wise. No, it isn't. That's not good. That's right. It's because you're traveling in only one dimension. Okay? You're traveling along a line. A line has one dimension. It only has length. Okay. And you say to yourself, let me be clever. Let's travel in two dimensions. Okay. Is that driving so on the shoulder of the road to get around the- Exactly. Uh, so it, instead of one lane road for you- Let's give it two lanes. That way, if a car stalls, the traffic can still move. Gotcha. Oh, my gosh. What an advance on transportation that is. Wow. I got to tell you, the nascent stages of transportation development, those people were really <laughs> stupid. No, no. They were very excited. <laughs> let's not just have a one-lane road. Let's have a two-lane road. And right. then as this got good to people. They say, well, let's make the two dimensions even bigger. So now you have three lanes, four lanes. The 405 in LA is six lanes plus shoulders on each side. Okay? So if any one car is slow or pokey or stalled, all the traffic can move around it. Fine. So now we have so many people with cars, we have clogged our two-dimensional system of travel. Right. It's clogged. So you say to yourself, you're stuck in traffic. I wish my car could elevate and then move through the air. So what you want now is a third dimension. Yes. Okay. So not we the are, one dimension of one lane, not the two dimensions of of multiple lanes, you want the third dimension of space. I love the it. Air, the air above. That's really what you're after, correct? That's correct. Okay, because when you do that, you're no longer in the traffic. Okay. And you can just bypass the traffic entirely. Okay, so now. Okay. Quick, 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 quick aside. No, no, quick aside. No, no. What? I got to just say this. What you just said is exactly the case because... I happen to be with somebody who owns a plane, and we went down the Pacific Coast Highway on a Friday night, and there was nothing but red tail lights for miles and miles and miles. And he was like, this 
is why you have a plane. Okay. Look at those suckers. Okay, so hold on. But, but just let's to be clear. You don't want a flying car to go from New York to L.A. We have airplanes for that, okay? Right. The flying car, I think, is entirely motivated by avoiding traffic. Yes. Okay? I, I, I think I understand this correctly. Yes. You don't say, I wish I had a flying car to, to no, to, to, to go to Europe. No, we have fast airplanes. Fine. So let's get back to being stuck in traffic in the 12 lane 405 in downtown LA. Okay. So now you want to say, let me go up to a third dimension. Yes. That will solve everything you say to yourself. Okay. So what you're after is not a flying car. You're after a third dimension. Okay. And New York City has already done that. New York City has flying cars. It's called the subway. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> It's called, that's what it is. I don't want my flying car to smell like <laughs> urine. <laughs> so there you what? are stuck in traffic and you say, let me go into a third dimension. It is not above, it's below. So you go down to the third dimension and you bypass all of that traffic. Yes, so, but I so, have so, to deal so with this. Trying- I got to deal with the smell of hobo pee, <laughs> frustration, and anger. Oh, and- you, you you talk like hobo pee smells different from your pee. No. <laughs> well, you got me there. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, so my point is anything that takes you into another dimension is the dimensional equivalent of a flying car. And we know this. That's why the interstate does not have stoplights. Mm. Any road that crosses it goes into the third dimension to get where it's going. So you have underpasses, you have crossovers, bridges, right? right. so that your traffic is not stopped. I'm telling you, society fundamentally has invoked the principles of flying cars without the noise and the danger of it. Wow. Okay. That sounds very much like, I know that this burger is made out of tofu, but because we call it a burger, it's a burger. No. <laughs> no. So, so what the future needs is more bridges and tunnels. All right. So what do you think about the Hyperloop then? The Hyperloop. So that's that's for traveling longer distances, like between cities that it would replace trains and short uh, right. uh, flight. So I, I'm, I have my skepticisms of the of the technology and to make it practical. But if if, if Elon is dreaming it up, I'm not going to stand in the way of anyone who dreams about a future. Because even if it doesn't work, there's other stuff that they're innovating to make it happen that could end up spinning off and completely transforming our lives for the better, as this does anytime anyone has done it before. So I'm not in his way. Keep going for the Hyperloop. It's, so it's a tube It's a tube that uses uh, interesting physics so that you can have very high acceleration and high speeds. Right. Uh, much higher than a, 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 a train. And it rivals the speeds that planes reach when they're going to nearby cities, like New York to Boston, New York to DC, or LA to San Francisco. Those distances are not so large that the plane would get really high and go very fast. Right. So it, it doesn't. It, so it, it keeps a lower speed to do that, and that's fine. It works for you. So I'm just telling you, Chuck. We've already delivered you the flying cars, and it's called the New York City subway system. Man, no. And you don't sound very satisfied by I that. I just. I'm not set. I want to. F- I want to fly my own car, <laughs> and I want to be George Jetson. The black George Jetson. The black That's what George I want Jetson. to be. Okay. You need the sound effects. How does that go? <laughs> that, that, thank you. you can... <laughs> Do that again. Let me hear it. <laughs> so, so yeah. And, and all right. A flying car. They had flying cars. They were like flying saucers, really. Flying car yes. saucers. Car saucers. Uh, with, with a little radio transmitter out the back. Here's the point. Have you ever heard a drone that you can hold in your hand uh, hover in front of you? Yes. Uh, you, you basically can't conduct a conversation with anyone else in the room because no. of the noise the propeller blades are making. And that's the noise it's making to provide enough thrust to hold up a simple GoPro camera. Okay. Now so let's haul your ass 
up right. in the third dimension. Mm-hmm. How much noise are those rotors making? We still have the noise abatement problem that is not solved. I'm going to say rotors. when it comes to flying cars, hearing is overrated. <laughs> 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 Where do you? What's what school of comedy were you trying? The macabre school of comedy. <laughs> well, no, now that's a very good point. I never thought of it that way because I I have seen these very small drones, and you're right. It is hard to hold a conversation if a drone is hovering and two of them it, you can't hear yourself. So Correct. That. Okay, and almost so now- every and almost every YouTube commercial or any other commercial where they show drones moving around and they're talking to you, right. you can't hear the drone. You can't hear the drone. Yeah. Okay. Silent. So now let, let me ask you this because I know they, where they, I, I know remove the soundtrack of the drone. They do. They do. Okay. And Otherwise, never, you can't have that conversation. There's never been a drone shot where you hear the drone. <laughs> that's <laughs> Think how, about it. That's how loud they are. You're absolutely right. Uh, uh, yeah. You okay? All right. Let me ask you this real quick because I know we're well, out, out, we're out of, out of time. time. We're out of time. Okay. What? We're out of time. Is there any way that in sci-fi movies that the Earth's magnetic field can be manipulated to create flight? Because that is the premise behind all hovering vehicles in the future, is that somehow they are able to take the magnetic field of the Earth and just rest upon it in such a way or focus it in such a way that it can create flight. Okay, so you remember... Compasses, remember those? Yeah. The needle points north, okay? Remember that? Okay. If you remove the cover of the compass, okay, so the entire strength of Earth's magnetic field is operating on that little needle, and it's got it pointing north. Take your finger and just spin it. It'll spin, okay? Yeah, it'll go crazy. It'll spin like a roulette wheel. You You could spin it like a roulette wheel, which means the strength of Earth's magnetic field Ain't shit. Okay. Oh. <laughs> if Take- your finger can override what it's trying to do to a needle, it ain't shit. Well, there excuse you go. Excuse the excuse. No, the, no, no. That that the, listen, the, that the sums candor. it up right there. So the the strength of magnetic field on maglevs, maglevs is way stronger than that of anything Earth's magnetic field is creating. The gotcha. magnet magnetically levitated trains. Right. So then you would have to create that infrastructure in order to have that. So there we go. Correct. Oh. And I'll, I'll tell you something quick. I was visiting China <clears throat> and the world's largest telescope there when we were filming for, for um, Cosmos. And the right. nearest large airport there is Shanghai. So I'm there and there's all these, you know, it's like any other airport. It's big and airy and there's all these signs with symbols for things. So you know what the bathroom looks like, that symbol, and food. It's got a knife and fork or chopsticks, right. whatever. And so there it is. And then in there, there was a symbol I didn't quite understand. And it was right next to like the bathroom symbol and the food symbol. And I said, oh my gosh, that's the signal for the magnetically levitated train. So a sign that China is actually living in the future in ways that we have yet to conceive. But don't, not, to, not to worry. American exceptionalism. One day we'll have maglev toilets. So there. <laughs> That's that's the sign you'll see at JFK. Take that, China, as I float above my throne. Oh, that's so that way your butt cheeks don't even touch the Never toilet touch, seat. Totally. I have no China. problem using public bathrooms because that's I brilliant. use a mag left toilet. That is brilliant, Chuck. But except you have to embed your butt cheeks with a magnetic. Uh, you know, you have to be magnetized somehow. So you need surgical implants. Yeah, we're still in, working in your- out the details. <laughs> <laughs> I could just picture this. Go to the maglev bathroom and everyone is just floating there Look. above the toilet. There you go. Right. <laughs> and we all have spectacular asses because of it. <laughs> we all got that our That means implants. it's time to end this explainer. Okay. <laughs> all right. Everything you never wanted to know uh, about uh, uh, right. mad lips. <laughs> what what the hell were we talking about? Yes. We're flying, flying cars. cars. Flying which cars. I'm, How do we end up which, with mag left toilets from flying cars? I'm gonna tell you this. I accept your um uh, explanation on the transportation aspect that we have conquered that part, you know, in the dimensions. All right. Yes. In the realm of dimensions, we have conquered that. Yes. I totally do not accept the idea that that's equivalent to a flying car. <laughs> I'm sorry. I've been cheated. 
Your people have cheated me. Okay, do you remember the hoverboard? Okay, from Back to the Future Part 2. I still uh, want one. Okay, however, and then someone came out with a product they called the hoverboard, yes. except it had wheels. Wheels, yeah. All right, and I'm thinking, was, who, who are you fooling here? This is not, why are you calling it a hoverboard? Then I thought about it. I thought about it. Go okay? ahead. The hoverboard in Back to the Future, um, it doesn't work if you ride it off a cliff. It right. doesn't work over water. Right. It maintains a few inch distance above the floor, the ground. Uh, okay. Just like a skateboard. So the hoverboard was not really much of an advance on anything. It's like saying, let's make exactly what a skateboard is, except it's not touching the ground. But you can't do anything different with it than you did with a skateboard. So where's the invention? Why did you waste my time? I'm just saying. Okay. All right. Well, you know what? It's like a flying car that can only hover a foot off the ground. It's not a flying car. Give me wheels <laughs> for that. Yeah, I don't need- no, that you're, no, you got me. You got you got that one right. You're absolutely okay. Right. So I was initially harsh on the battery operated hoverboard, and then I said it's doing exactly what the one does in Back to the Future. And the who cares if their wheels touching the ground? It's the same thing. There it true, is. True. True. Uh, and, and and it makes for really good Instagram videos where people fall and break their arms. <laughs> So <laughs> again, the macabre school of comedy <laughs> from which Chuck. Hale. I got. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> What's wrong with me today? All right, we got. We, we're way over time here. Okay. All right. All right. We good. That was flying cars, Chuck. So don't ever bug me about that again. <laughs> All right. <laughs> flying cars equals the New York City subway. Subway. Urine. You urine soaked subway. All right. This has been a Star Talk Explainer. Neil deGrasse Tyson here. Keep looking up. <laughs>